Oh hi, sorry. Um, welcome to Treehouse Tutorials. Um, this is another one for Year Three, Four children, and it's all about conjunctions. Um, just as you joined me there, I was kind of trying to do this little challenge that my son set me. Um, he basically loves his Lego and he's wanting to join these two pieces together, uh, but to also extend this length so that he's kind of got a longer platform for the, the thing that he's building at the moment. Um, I was just sort of wondering, here's, a, here's another piece here and this is the way that I could do it, isn't it? Yeah, I knew I was getting close to figuring it out. And you know what? What I've got here is a little bit of a kind of picture of conjunctions, okay? Because conjunctions, as we're going to discover today, um, are there to join together parts of a sentence, um, but they're also there to extend sentences. I guess that's kind of what I've done with this Lego in the end, okay? So um, what we're going to do is, before we get stuck into the year three, four material, I just want us to pause for a second and I want us to actually take a step back. I want us to go back to the days of year two. Now, for some of you out there, that'll just be last year. Um, for myself and any other parents that are watching, we might be going back to before the millennium, okay, back into the 1990s or even further. Um, but anyway, let's take a step back. Let's rewind. <laughs> Just like that, we've landed in year two. So when you were in year two, you were introduced to coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. So for coordinating conjunctions, there's a little acronym here. The word fanboys helps you to remember that there were seven different types of coordinating conjunctions. Some of these you use more frequently than others. So you can see how they could be used. The crucial thing here is that these coordinating conjunctions, conjunctions join together two words, two phrases or two clauses uh, to create a compound sentence, okay? So we have a sentence here whereby it's balanced, okay? Um, and sometimes we could have two main clauses that could be joined by a coordinating conjunction, for instance. Very different when it comes to these subordinating conjunctions. And this is where we're going to zoom in a bit more today in our three, four content. But even in year two, you were introduced to some of these words and how to use them. When, if, that, because. Now these, as we're going to go into more in the rest of this video, are all, they all begin subordinate clauses. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit of a look at how we're going to develop and broaden and extend our sentences in a wider range using subordinate conjunctions. So let's come back forward to year three and four now. And just like that, we are back in year three, four after our journey back to year two. So you can see here that we are now looking at a wider range of subordinate conjunctions. Okay, remember all these conjunctions begin a subordinate clause, which we're going to look into a little bit more now. Um, and they also all therefore create complex sentences. So let's have a look. We've got our initial ones there, but we've got some additional ones here as well. And I've picked out one of my favourites, which is whenever. Okay, And this is the sentence that I've written out here. I shelter in the treehouse whenever it rains. Okay, Now I've colour coded this slightly to just show how I shelter in the treehouse would be regarded here as a main clause, okay? Um, however, whenever it rains, remember it's begun there by our subordinating conjunction, so this is a subordinate clause, whenever it rains. Um, now, because of this, what I like to actually really do with these sentences is, yes, we've said that conjunctions can join parts of sentences together. Yeah, they can, and they're joining here a main clause and a subordinate clause but actually you can flip them around. So I want you now, I'm gonna give you a few seconds or so, I want you to consider how you could change the order of the sentence and if any punctuation would need to be added as well. Have a think about that now. And just like that, we're back. So you may have had something like this. Whenever it rains, I shelter in the treehouse. Whenever it rains being our subordinate clause here. And I shelter in the treehouse being the main clause. We flipped them round this time. However, I did mention punctuation. So let's have a think about here where we're going to have a pause. Whenever it rains, I shelter in the treehouse. Hopefully we heard that there's going to be a pause around here. We would indicate this with a comma. Okay. Um, so basically the general rule is if you've brought the subordinate in conjunction to the front of the sentence, 
then you've created a subordinate clause at the front of the sentence and we need to demarcate that and show that by using a comma before we go into the main clause. Okay, whenever it rains, comma, I shelter in the treehouse. We're going to have a look at just one more example of another of these subordinate and conjunctions being used in a sentence. There we are with our next example. So this time we've got a blank in here. Blank, her injured foot, she finished the marathon. A little bit like the last time, I have this time begun the sentence with a subordinate and conjunction. The problem is I haven't given you which one it is. Now it is one of these up here, okay? And I want you to have a little think now, uh, give you a little bit of time to consider which one would be most appropriate in this blank here. Which one would be the one that would fit in there? Have a think about it now. And we're back again. Very well done if you managed to get despite in that blank there. Despite her injured foot, she finished the marathon. It's a particularly tricky conjunction to use that one. Okay, uh, but again, we've got colour coded the subordinate clause here in blue and the main clause in black. And just because I wasn't particularly clear about that earlier, the subordinate clause cannot stand by itself as a sentence alone. Okay, it is not a complete sentence alone. So imagine if you got to, despite her injured foot, you're left thinking, come on, finish the sentence, give me some more. Okay, whereas here in black, the main clause, she finished the marathon. That's a sentence, a complete sentence on its own. Okay, so just be clear on that distinction between subordinate clauses and main clauses. So I hope that's been a useful little introduction to um, a wider range of conjunctions at Key Stage 2. Um, I would like you to go now and have a go at it yourself using a wide range. Try and get these into your writing. They're particularly useful, as I say, to vary our sentence openers so that we're not always just starting with pronouns like he or she or I at the start of our sentences or the, for example, and we're using a variety of different words to begin sentences. Off you go and give it a go.